okay so now that we have proved uh, that uh, derivations and derivation trees are uh, essentially same thing so uh, you can derive alpha from a if and only if there is a, a tree with yield alpha so now this correspondence is not exactly a one-to-one -one correspondence because of a very uh, uh, petty reason uh, so just to show you an example uh, so suppose you have uh, this derivation uh, tree uh, <coughs> uh, you are deriving uh, what this string a a b a a from s so you see that a a b a a being derived from s but now you see when you are trying to write down a uh, derivation uh, from this uh, derivation tree i mean you can have many derivations and that's because uh, <coughs> the order in which you expand these variables right for example from here okay you first uh, expand it into the small a a s so that's fine that's same for all this thing but then here you choose to expand this a uh, so that gives you this uh, s b a right so that gives you s b a and here you choose to expand this so you get um, this a here right uh, no sorry not this one uh, this a this a okay <coughs> and uh, similarly i mean uh, even after this when you get this uh, thing uh, you expand this uh, so this and this are same but here you are <coughs> expanding this one whereas uh, here you are expanding this one so the order in which you expand this uh, variables so that gives you uh, different derivations but they are uh, essentially same in the sense that all these derivations correspond to the same derivation uh, tree okay so this uh, looks like a <laughs> unnecessary uh, kind of uh, complication uh, um, to kind of apparently view the same thing as uh, different things so it's better to have some sort of one to one correspondence between derivation tree and uh, derivation so now how do we establish that uh, one to one correspondence we uh, impose some constraint on uh, this uh, derivation so for example if we uh, Im I mean impose this constraint that in this derivation we always expand the leftmost variable okay so then you see that from here um, you always get this uh, thing in this a a s but now this means that uh, we and we will not expand this we will first expand uh, this this leftmost uh, thing so this a right so then if we expand this we get this so again in this exp expression what is the leftmost uh, variable so this is the leftmost variable so we expand this yeah so uh, first we expand this because this is the leftmost and here this is the leftmost so we expand this and uh, <coughs> so then we get this then we expand this because this is the leftmost and then finally we expand this and we get this string so the point is we are always expanding the leftmost uh, uh, variable so similarly we can <coughs> set up this constraint that we always expand the rightmost variable okay so then you get something like this uh, you expand this then you expand this then you expand this then this and you get this thing and you see that <coughs> there is a unique leftmost derivation or there is a unique rightmost derivation for a given uh, derivation tree right and though we are always saying derivation tree derivation tree I mean all our uh, I mean discussions equally apply to some a tree so you remember what uh, was uh, a tree so a tree had a as a root and uh, both in derivation so derivation tree has uh, s as a root and in both a tree and s tree <coughs> 
the term the, the leaves can also be variables or uh, epsilon obviously so yeah we are also accommodating all those things so instead of uh, just uh, uh, say s going to some something in over terminals so the same argument applies to some a going to some alpha where this alpha belongs to uh, um, it involves uh, symbols from both terminal and uh, variable okay so it also applies to this sort of derivation but anyway we want to <coughs> establish uh, a sort of one to one correspondence between derivation and uh, this uh, this uh, tree the corresponding tree a tree so and uh, that is uh, established uh, using uh, um, by imposing some additional constraint like this or this so in in many cases we just uh, uh, take the leftmost derivation so in many proofs uh, we say that okay let this be the leftmost derivation this is the leftmost derivation so <coughs> the benefit of saying that is that uh, then you know that it's a specific derivation i mean it's there is no different way to do that thing uh, now why this uh, should be unique for a tree because uh, I mean, th again the reason is obvious I mean, you are given this uh, tree and uh, you uh, expand it in the first uh, level right so this is the first level and in this level you see the leftmost thing and then you uh, do this thing okay. uh, and even in this level uh, you see the leftmost thing you do this and then you go back right then you track back so you go here up to here and then you see that this is a terminal so okay fine so then you go here this is a terminal so you expand this and this again you track back and you see that uh, and all the branches have been uh, expanded then you go back and then this <coughs> is the remaining thing so you so you see that uh, there is a unique way of traversing this tree i mean if we impose this condition that you should always expand the leftmost uh, uh, variable that is not already expanded so then you get a unique way of tra traversing this uh, tree uh, so left to right way of traversing this tree so you get a unique uh, um, unique way of writing down this uh, derivation uh, similarly for uh, rightmost so in rightmost you do it from right to left okay so for any given uh, and not just derivation tree as i said so we can have uh, a tree also uh, so we have a unique and uh, leftmost and a unique rightmost uh, derivation uh, for whatever you are deriving okay <coughs> so that's a nice thing now <coughs> the next question is for a for a string now let's just uh, concentrate on uh, strings over terminals but as i said i mean all these uh, arguments also uh, apply to this alpha and so so uh, all these uh, discussions also apply for this case also but uh, to make it simple we are just sticking to this uh, thing so to keep the examples uh, simple so <coughs> okay so now we have a sort of one to one correspondence between derivation and uh, derivation tree now <coughs> finally we are deriving say some uh, string so here in over uh, terminals right uh, so this is a string over terminals and uh, all this plus and this thing is uh, part of terminal you see that the terminal is this symbol a and also this symbol plus right so this plus is nothing else it's just a symbol in terminal so this is a string over this thing and this is our only variable and this is our uh, production rule so this and this <coughs> so you simply see that uh, this uh, derives only strings of this form right because this is the expression so this is uh, simply uh, this thing that we uh, 
discussed uh, in the very first uh, discussion so yeah th this sort of thing so here we had also product um, i have just make it simple by removing this product so i am using this thing so this uh, okay <coughs> so you see that it only derives strings of this form uh, but now the question is for a string can i have a unique derivation okay it's a unique leftmost derivation because there can be again many derivation so we said that uh, we'll fix on uh, leftmost derivation so the earlier thing was what given a derivation tree we have a unique uh, leftmost derivation but now we are asking given a string can we have a unique uh, leftmost derivation or a unique rightmost derivation so that amounts to asking that given a string can we get a unique derivation tree because if we get a unique derivation tree for this and then for that tree we have a unique uh, leftmost or rightmost derivation so then for this string we get a unique uh, leftmost or rightmost derivation but here in this grammar you see that you can't even have unique tree for uh, say this uh, uh, string and why because you just follow this rule so one way to do this is uh, <coughs> so you uh, see you match this with uh, say one uh, expression okay and then you see this whole thing as another expression okay so then uh, this expression is what this expression is uh, just uh, this a as a expression okay and this plus you have and uh, then this rest of this two a is so that thing is uh, another expression so this is what is happening uh, here okay so this uh, <coughs> this a is one expression and the uh, rest of the thing is uh, say this expression and this and this and with this plus together uh, this is uh, one uh, this expression and then this part is what this part is again an expression which is just a and another expression which is this remaining two a's and you have a plus in between and here again um, you have uh, this plus in between and two expressions here which are a this is one sort of tree to do that so we can do it in another way where uh, we break this as uh, say this e and this as this e so we uh, have this plus here and this e is just uh, this e plus this e and then this e is broken down into this e plus e this e's are a and similarly here so this is a different tree right so this and these are different trees so now if you have uh, different derivation tree for this uh, string and then for each of this tree you have say a uh, leftmost derivation for this a leftmost derivation for this but you have then two leftmost derivation right so there is ambiguity here how to derive uh, this thing okay <coughs> so given a string you can derive it in two different ways two different ways with the constraint that you are doing only leftmost derivation uh, and there can be other ways also but uh, there are more than one ways that is uh, what i'm saying so we say that a uh, context free grammar g is ambiguous so remember this uh, jargon <coughs> so this is ambiguous if there exists some string uh, generated which is generated by this uh, g so you <coughs> such that uh, there are more than one derivation uh, trees for uh, this x okay ng so you see that uh, if the grammar is not ambiguous that means if it is unambiguous that means by this definition that for all string we have only one derivation tree right for all string in the language in the language generated by g of course if it's not in l of g then there is no derivation tree 
but uh, for <coughs> all x which is generated by this g it is generated by a unique uh, derivation tree if it is unambiguous right and then by this uh, previous uh, statement that for any given derivation tree there is a unique uh, leftmost or rightmost uh, derivation so you see that if it is unambiguous then for any string there is a unique leftmost or rightmost derivation tree so one way to prove that some grammar is uh, ambiguous is to produce uh, two leftmost derivation so instead of uh, drawing these two trees uh, if I uh, <coughs> just show that there are two leftmost derivations so here uh, <coughs> uh, I can say that uh, this um, e goes to e plus e uh, and this goes to uh <coughs> so we expand uh, this uh, e uh, plus uh, this e and uh, then this becomes uh, a plus uh, <coughs> e plus e and then this becomes uh, e plus uh, okay so yeah so then we expand this into a and uh, this and then we expand this into a plus a plus e plus e and then we uh, expand individually so a plus a plus a plus e and uh, finally uh, this thing uh, this thing so this is one uh, leftmost derivation so another leftmost derivation could be again uh, sorry e goes to uh, e plus e and uh, then this e goes to uh, uh, this e goes to e plus e okay so i am expanding this into this and then we have this part obviously and then again from uh, <coughs> here I can now do this uh, a plus e uh, plus e and then I expand this so then I expand this e plus e and uh, then I have a plus a plus a plus e and then uh, finally uh, this string so you see that both are uh, leftmost derivation okay uh, <coughs> but uh, this two leftmost derivation correspond to this two different trees so even without talking about this tree if we can produce two leftmost derivation or two rightmost derivation so then we know that the uh, grammar is uh, ambiguous right now <coughs> you see it's always important to differentiate between properties which are properties of a language and which are properties of a computational model that we are using to recognize or generate that uh, language okay so <coughs> for example uh, in regular language also you can have some regular language and that language itself has uh, may have some property okay and that doesn't depend on whether you are using a dfa or nfa or regular expression to express that thing so the, the language itself may have some property okay but then again you can associate some property with a machine say you associate some property with uh, a dfa so that means uh, in that case uh, it's a property of the machine itself it accepts some language uh, it's okay but uh, still uh, yeah the, the, the properties associated with the model so here it's the same thing so when we say that uh, 
something is ambiguous that something is the grammar okay it's not that the language is uh, ambiguous and to make uh, this uh, point uh, clear uh, so here is this thing so <coughs> you can have two equivalent uh, grammars for the same language say this is l okay so the language is l and uh, it doesn't it, it, it's a C, a cfl so all we know that there is some cfg which generates this uh, l okay but there can be many cfgs okay there can be infinitely many cfgs which generate the same language l and it may happen that one of that grammar is ambiguous one of that grammar is not ambiguous right so that means we cannot say that this l is uh, ambiguous so it's not the property of this l it's just the property of this grammar okay so ambiguity is property of grammar it's not a property of the language and why is it so <coughs> you see that we had this uh, uh, grammar right uh, in the previous slide so we showed that this is uh, ambiguous right now we produce another grammar equivalent grammar so when are the two grammars equivalent if they generate the same language so we produce a equivalent <coughs> uh, grammar which is unambiguous you see here i have uh, this e and f and again this are the terminals now the production rules are uh, this so this e either goes to a because uh, you uh, so this is the start symbol right e is the start symbol so this means you are just deriving a or uh, you are deriving a and something else right so then so what are the moti motivation so our strings are of the form uh, say this uh, uh, a plus a plus a plus something up to something right so the motivation is uh, if i expand it into something more than one a so then this is a and this part is f so i am identifying this part so which starts with a plus and ends with a a and we have many such things so i am identifying this thing as uh, f right <coughs> so then f is what if itself is uh, either so this you can have just a plus uh, a here uh, so if you have just this one a in this f part so if can be either just plus a okay or this f can be just this plus a and the remaining plus a's right again you have some something dot 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 plus a so this is this f part okay but then this if you isolate this is what this is again just uh, concatenation of plus a plus a plus a plus a plus a so this we can again say that this is uh, uh, f okay so uh, this is the idea <coughs> so uh, i mean to be precise some f only derives strings uh, of the form so we say that um, f uh, you can prove formally that uh, f only uh, or f uh, um, derives uh, or uh, let me just uh, use the notation here so what we are trying to prove is that uh, f derives uh something over this terminals okay so this is this is some x uh, this is uh, some x uh, which consists of only terminals okay so it and uh, it derives this if and only if uh, x is of form mm, so x is uh, this plus a repeated i times for some i
Okay, so it is easy to see from just this definition, and that means E is of the form just A or A plus uh, th th this form. Right. Now this grammar is unambiguous. Why? Because how can you match a string uh, with these rules, right? So uh, <coughs> you have to. So this is this is a string, right? And you have to uh, find a tree for that. So the first production has to be uh, either this or this. And since it has more than uh, one uh, is, uh, so the, the first production has to be this, right? There is no other way. So you have uh, A and then uh, F. And once you are in F, there is only one way to do this. Either you have this plus one and you end the string. There is nothing more to do. Or you have this plus A and then you have another F. Then you have plus A another F. So the moment you use this part, so it stops. So there is really only one way to construct a derivation tree uh, for uh, a string like this in this grammar okay so there is no two different way of doing this in this grammar so that means this uh, grammar is uh, unambiguous right so you see that uh, this ambiguity or unambiguity is actually property of the grammar and not a property of the language itself so <coughs> now uh, there is a kind of ambiguity which is property of the language and what is that uh, uh, so uh, yeah so <coughs> it, it comes from the question is uh, that Okay, so here what we did, so uh, we started with a uh, grammar which was ambiguous. So we looked at the language generated by that grammar and then we mm, somehow mm, thought of some unambiguous which can generate the same language. So we, uh, we are somehow constructing an equivalent uh, uh, unambiguous grammar for the same language. Now, can we always do that? <coughs> so, what I mean is that uh, you are given a ambiguous CFG, okay, and you take the language generated by that ambiguous CFG. Now, can we always find an equivalent unambiguous CFG, say G prime, uh, which generates the same language? Okay, uh, equivalent means it generates the same language. But anyway, I have a redundancy here. So that's the question. That's an interesting question. That uh, can we always transform the ambiguous grammar to an unambiguous one, or even if there is no, I mean, algorithm, at least mathematically, can we say that uh, it always exists for any ambiguous grammar? Uh, there exists a uh, equivalent unambiguous grammar. Is this true? And uh, surprisingly, the answer is no. Okay, I mean, both ways the answer will be. Uh, kind of surprising but this is uh, kind of uh, more uh, uh, interesting to me and we will not give uh, a proof here uh, because the proof is quite lengthy if you go through Hofcroft Ullman the proof is there Hofcroft Mothmani Ullman doesn't uh, include that proof I and mean, Hofcroft Mothmani Ullman kind of uh, <coughs> leaves out many interesting non-trivial part but anyway uh, so in Hofcroft Willman also the proof I think takes uh, some more than five pages, more than four pages or something like that, four or five pages, and uh, it's it's a very involved proof. But uh, it's not only about the length. The proof is not very illuminating. I mean, you go through steps after steps after steps, and then finally you show that some language is uh, such that you you cannot find a uh, unambiguous grammar for that um, but uh, anyway so now you see that what we are talking here is that uh, so this language okay whatever this language is this language is such that there is no unambiguous grammar for this okay and you see that this is actually a property of the language 
so what we are saying that this is a cfl and this language has the property that there is no unambiguous grammar for this language since this is a CFL, there is a CFG. There is some CFG for this L. Uh, that's for sure because this is a CFL. But we are saying that there is no unambiguous uh, CFG for this L. And this is a property of the language itself. right? So then we say that this CFL L is inherently unambiguous. Okay. So the language itself is uh, ambiguous here because, because there is no unambiguous grammar for this language so this is the definition if for all cfgg uh, which accepts that language uh, it implies that g is uh, ambiguous okay and this answer uh, no it says that there exists a inherently unambiguous grammar we can have this definition irrespective of this answer but then the question is, uh, does there exist any inherently ambiguous grammar? And this answer uh, ascertains that yes, there exists uh, inherently uh, ambiguous language. Uh, okay. So the, the, it's a weird language such that no matter how hard you try, you cannot come up with a unambiguous grammar for that language. So <coughs> yeah, as I said, uh, it's a property of the language. It's not a property of any particular grammar for that language. And uh, the that language that I was saying that there exists a language for which you cannot find a, a unambiguous grammar. So again, uh, um, the, the proof uh, um, gives you that language. It's not like uh, there exists some language. It's existential proof and you do not. In many mathematical proof it's like that i mean you you just prove existence of certain object without actually uh, finding what that object is but here it gives you that language okay if you see the proof if you are uh, interested enough you can go through that proof uh, <coughs> so this is the language okay and this language uh, they prove that it's inherently uh, ambiguous and uh, so we can at least uh, say something about this language uh, without uh, diving into the proof so first of all it's easy to see that this language is uh, cfl why so this language is uh, union of uh, two languages right uh, so <coughs> if you start with the start symbol s so i'm not writing down all this terminals not the, the terminals are what a b c d right the non terminals are what whatever appears in this uh, production rule so s a b c s prime uh, that's it and start symbol is s and production is this so <coughs> now it's easy to see that this language is a cfl because uh, <coughs> you see that uh, from the start symbol you can either uh, I mean, transform this like this or like this and after that um, you have some two different ways of uh, handling this thing because A and C involves only this production uh, so it involves only this production uh, and uh, So yeah, A and C only uh, involves this production, and S prime only uh, involves uh, this production. So it involves S prime and V, right? So you either uh, <coughs> do this that S goes to A C, and then uh, you just use this. Uh, so just uh, say that. Uh, <coughs> so then here you just use these two productions okay because it, it only involves a and c and it only involves a and c you, you do not get b or s prime or even s after that so after that you only are i'm switching between a c a c a c and uh, you get something or in the very first step you from s you go to s prime and then once you are in s prime 
you are uh, kind of switching between this s prime b b s prime whatever so you are only using now this two production rules so you are using something like that and uh, <coughs> so the argument is what you can uh, derive um, with this uh, sort of starting uh, is uh, this line th this part so if you just call this as your l1 and this as your l2 so whatever you can derive by first uh, uh, doing this expansion uh, is precisely this l1 and whatever you can derive uh, using this as your first thing is uh, precisely uh, this part and uh, why is it so because you see i'm um, you just look at this uh, a what is this a so th this is the same thing that we did uh, for this uh, for this uh, this thing right this thing so this goes to zero or something that same thing between so this only derives uh, things like this so if you have some symbol here some symbol here and this is in the middle so all you can derive is uh, this to the something this to something and these this are same the numbers are same okay so it's the same thing here uh, but with uh, but with uh, a b so all that you can derive from a is of this form a n b n similarly for c I and mean, all you can derive from c uh, you see that it's of this form some c m d m and here again mm, this i mean so here uh, i mean you are using just say this one with, with this a d you get uh, a a and then s prime then again d d then again you uh, do this you get um, say a cube s prime d cube a4 s prime d4 uh, and finally i'm um, this s prime will be replaced by this b uh, so from here you can only derive strings of this form right uh, so this is finally replaced with uh, b so here it was being replaced by this epsilon and here it will be replaced by this and then this b is again this uh, form so b can only generate this this thing right so this ac is what this is a n b n c m d m so this part and uh, this uh, s prime is what so this s prime is uh, a n b n and then b is inside so a n b n uh, sorry a n d n and then this uh, b is uh, just uh, say b m c m so it's it's this part so uh, <coughs> yeah so uh, this is a cfl right uh, because we have produced some grammar now uh, you see that there is one form of string which you can derive in either this way or this way that is a n b n c n d n because a n b n c n d n also falls into this language it also falls into this language right so either you can derive it using this sort of uh, production or uh, this sort of production and both uh, in both case you can have uh, leftmost uh, uh, derivation uh, so at least for this grammar you see that uh, it's uh, ambiguous precisely for this sort of uh, strings which you can derive uh, either in this way because it's here either now <coughs> the <laughs> the proof consists of this uh, whole thing that no matter what grammar you come up with so this is just one grammar so this proves nothing it only proves that this is a cfl now to prove that this is inherently ambiguous the thing is that you have to prove that no matter what grammar you come up with okay so this sort of strings can be derived using more than one ways okay uh, and it proves that uh, for sufficiently uh, large n so it proves that uh, 
uh, for any grammar for any grammar um, I mean CFG uh, say G uh, such that this uh, L of G is G there exists uh, a N uh, in fact uh, it proves that there exists say some uh, C so this C depends on this uh, grammar uh, such that uh, for all n greater than uh, C it's not just a particular n so for all n greater than this number uh, so this A n B n C n D n uh, C n D n has uh, more than one more than one derivation tree so that uh, proves that this language is inherently uh, ambiguous that means you cannot find any uh, grammar any unambiguous grammar which generates this language okay so that was uh, ambiguity